Oh, <laughs> almost fell off the bench there. Hello, pleasure seekers. So we're out in RV land. One of the things that both myself and uh, Ramona were discussing, she's off camera there, she's very shy, and it, <laughs> is that what's, what's this RVing thing all about? And, and what is it that attracted us to it? And, and why are we doing it? Because it's really, well, to some people it is very solitary. If you're out boondocking and you're going to um, different places that aren't part of a park system, uh, where you're not parked cheek by jowl with other people. But notwithstanding that, we haven't tried the boondocking. Um, we're, we're too scared, but we will try it. We will try it later. Uh, however, uh, here we are in um, a KOA park, uh, and you can see more of the vehicles back there. But it's been cleared out, actually, since um, since yesterday, actually. Today's Monday, and a whole ton of people cleared out. So uh, normally, uh, this picture would be suffuse with RVs and giant RVs and 44-foot bus RVs and uh, things like that and they were they're all packed really tightly so what what makes that enjoyable now there are many uh, spots here where people are uh, staying all summer so those are what are those called those are not permanent seasonal seasonal, seasonal spots what's the attraction to that um, many people are coming from farms where they've got a ton of space because we've been talking to people already here and they come here to spend the entire summer um, shoved really closely uh, next to a whole bunch of people uh, so seasonal day this starts in May and then they leave in you know Thanksgiving weekend in Canadian October Canadian Thanksgiving in October what's the attraction to that now uh, there's what were uh, just a ton of kids riding around here and so there is that whole notion where you know the same group of people are up at a specific park seasonal park and they bring their family and their kids and their friends and things like that and so that's how they spend their summer much like the traditional cottages which we used to be able to afford here in uh, in Ontario which no one can anymore but we've now been to I don't know several four or five places and and each place is different and and none of them we would want to spend weeks and weeks at, uh, but we have the option of moving from one place to another. It's kind of relaxing. And then one person in one of the RV forums, I think, uh, wrote about it and, and it described it the best. What we're really doing is running away. Um, and that's really what it feels like. So it doesn't matter where we're running away to, it's just really a nice feeling to run away from business, run away from your house, run away from the things you have to do at your house, run away from whatever kids are still remaining in your house. And I think that's it. That's a perfect explanation for what we're doing. So the venues haven't really been a problem. I mean, it's weird. Yeah, you're, you're leaving your home where you're living next to a whole bunch of other people like we are. And then we come to a place where we are next to a whole bunch of other people. How's that relaxing? How is that communing with nature? Although, again, you can see that there's lots of trees and there's lots of trails and there's things to do which necessarily you don't have in the city. So that is one of the, the benefits of, of doing something like this. It's a change uh, and the, the fact that you are getting to know friendly people you have some really really nice chats everybody wants to talk to you and and that's that's a change so running away really is the best metaphor for what it is this whole RV I think is uh, is all about and you just keep running away because we'll be going away from here to Cobalt Ontario and so we're running away from here so we only have to stay here for three days and then we'll stay three days in Cobalt and enjoy our, our time there and it's a, a, a leisurely experience the other thing that dawned on me as to just why does this feel like a vacation is that even the driving part for me at least felt like it was part of the vacation when you fly somewhere the driving part to the airport does not feel like a vacation part of the vacation at all in fact you're just stressed about parking your car at a hundred dollars an hour and whatever 
airport parking lot or you take a, a limo for $3,000 or whatever it is that they charge in, in Toronto these days to get to the airport. Um, that's not particularly fun. Uh, lining up in customs isn't particularly fun. Uh, getting your tickets and all that arranged isn't particularly uh, fun. And then you get shoved on this giant aluminum cigar tube and you're shot into the sky. And probably the trip back adds all the stress that you were that had been relieved while you were actually <laughs> vacationing. But I have found with this RVing is that the drive is part of the vacation and is in enjoyable. So there's no part of this that isn't kind of interesting. And then the challenge of being in a small RV like we have, we're the only B-class in this <laughs> entire park, everyone's got these giant, giant rigs is that you have to learn how to be frugal with what you're packing, with what you're using, and the supplies that you've got, especially when it comes to freshwater, uh, your black water tank and your gray water tank. And potato chips. And potato chips. You have to, you have to be careful about using up your potato chips too early and not having any left for anybody else. No, no names. I'm not, not mentioning any names. But for now, especially with this stupid pandemic, we're pretty happy to travel around in Canada because there's an awful lot to see. Anyway, so those are my thoughts, our thoughts, as to just what made RVing um, of interest to us and why it continues to be interesting. Is there anything that I forgot that you want to add? No. So till next time, uh, see you. Enjoy your vacations.